Do you want to know BK and Mai's favorite Halloween Horror Nights houses from this year? Watch today's annual pass and you'll find out. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a brand new episode of Annual Pass. This is the podcast where we talk about all things theme parks, rides, shows, attractions. If it happens inside of a theme park, it happens here on Annual Pass. I'm your host, Jack Patillo, and of course, joining me as always is the lovely and beautiful and talented co-host, BK. Hi, Beeks. Hello. How are you doing? I have no voice. You have no voice? You do lots of screaming, lots of screaming. We got a fun episode to talk about today because we are going to recap our time at Halloween Horror Nights 31 at Universal Studios Orlando. It was awesome. We went there last weekend, had an amazing time. Our our HHN uh, encyclopedia, human encyclopedia, (laughs) Mally, she also joined us too. And uh, she walked us through a bunch of stuff. It was great. We have tons of videos that that we're putting together right now. Our YouTube channel is active. We've got vlogs. We're doing video content over there, youtube.com slash annual pass. Also, TikTok, we are on TikTok. It's uh, annual pass pod over on TikTok. We made a whole bunch of stuff. We made a bunch of stuff at Halloween Horror Nights, which are going to be, I think, slowly dropping now. So you can actually check out all the additional content we have going on over there. And also on social media, we're annual underscore pass over on Twitter and on Instagram as well. So follow us there. Let all your friends know about annual pass and all of the fun shenanigans we get up to but uh oh yeah we also we have some new merchandise yes new merch we did a photo shoot yesterday that was really fun. i'm not sure exactly when it's coming out i think around black friday cyber Something monday like that but yeah we, we got a new shirt coming out we got a new hat coming out we got yes. a, we got our first athletic gear rope drop running club we got our first uh our first athletic gear hitting as well that'll be so, coming out soon so if so. i get the clothes yeah that say i'm an athlete i become an athlete right uh yeah that's that's how it works okay cool osmosis <laughs> like you went T-pose for I did, I did. I had to suck in the rays. Nice, okay? <laughs> nice. Oh, man. But yeah, so uh, we had an amazing time out at Halloween Horror Nights 31. Our friends from Universal actually flew us out. So they took care of us. They they brought us out. They put us up in the uh, the, the Dockside yes, Hotel, dockside. which I had never stayed there before. Ben stayed there last time. I've stayed at Surfside a couple times, but the uh, Dockside Hotel is really nice. We had, uh, we had some interesting things happen to us on the way to and from... Orlando, that weekend was just cursed in general. I, I feel like <laughs> we got to Orlando. Let's just start from the very beginning. We landed in Orlando. Well, mm-hmm. first of all, we had an early, early flight because we wanted to be able to get to Orlando early so we could then hit the parks right. on Saturday night. Just I was like, yeah, well, let's go there and you know hang out. And actually, we were going to Halloween Horror Nights like the first day we got mm-hmm. there. And um, we got to the Orlando airport. And if you don't know the Orlando airport, <laughs> they have all of these gates that are sort of like satellites. So like basically you take a little thing called the APM, the automated people mover. I don't know what the it, it's, it's the monorail. It's essentially much. a monorail that you see. So you take it from the main terminal building where you get your tickets and everything mm-hmm. go through security. You take one of these things out to the gates, which are kind of scattered about. So that way you can space you out. So we're about to get on the APM. The one hit before us just took off. It went about 200 feet and stopped. And I was like, <laughs> oh, that's not good. That's weird. And then all of a sudden, alarm started going off. And it's like, the automated people mover is down. Please. And it's just like, and then like security came through these doors. And then like the door alarm started going off. (laughs) It was not a fun way to to kick off the trip. We were there for over an hour for sure. And we're like sitting there like, okay, well, is it like broken down? Like normally there's two trams. Like I am my whole existence (laughs) of living in Florida and being to that Orlando airport. That has never happened, never happened to me. Never happened Ever. to me. Ever. Never. I was flabbergasted. And to see security come over the walkway, like, yeah. I, like I was like, is this a zombie apocalypse? <laughs> like, what is going on? Are we going to die, Jack? Help me. And we, we survived, though. We eventually made it out, got to our hotel, and then went out to Halloween Horror Nights that night. And oh my gosh. And from that point on, it was all awesome. Then on the way back, our car broke down before it made it to our parking spot. So that, that was a whole other thing. You weren't there for that. That was. Wait, what? Yeah, so. <laughs> We'll, we'll get to the middle part, okay, but the, okay, the, okay. the end part is essentially I, I park in one of those offsite lots, you know, where you like, you know, a satellite lot where you take a van to it and they get your, your car. So Ben, uh, Kai and myself were all in this this shuttle bus. And before it made it to the highway, the guy's like, oh, car's dead. Van's dead. Sorry. And then they had to send another one and we had to move between different vehicles to then get to our car. <laughs> oh my God. Long, long. <laughs> Cursed weekend. The but, curse of Halloween Horror But hey, let's talk about the fun stuff we did while we were in Orlando. So uh, we went to Halloween Horror Nights the first night, and really, we kind of wanted to get our footing there because Halloween Horror Nights is very, very overwhelming. There oh, is yeah. so much stuff going on there. Like, the whole park is dark. There's people screaming. There's loud music playing. There's people with chainsaws running around. And so we're like, the first night, let's just get in, kind of wander around, check out some food, and just take our time with it and just kind of relax, maybe ride some rides. 
And uh, we did that and had a really good time. And uh, we got to eat some really good stuff. Oh, man. The well, food was what, That wild. pork thing we had out by Fast and Furious? That pork, it was like a pork like skewer over like a white cheddar mac and cheese. Yeah. It was so good. So good. And these are like dishes that aren't normally there. They're like exclusive like meals and snacks for Halloween Horror Nights. So yeah, I yeah. love it. Yeah, it's kind of cool because like Halloween Horror Nights, there's so many different things you can do. Like mm -hmm. literally, we spent a whole night at Halloween Horror Nights. We didn't go to a single house. Yeah. Because we were just wandering around checking out food and all like the cool stuff they had to offer like this we went to the tribute store mm -hmm. wandered through there found some cool stuff i bought katie a little little boot purse it's... the little boot purse is so cute the yeah. merchandise for halloween horror nights is just awesome <laughs> like i don't mean to do all that again like hashtag not sponsored but yeah, yeah, yeah. they really stepped up their game like it's not just t-shirts with like little like figures like they really like make I don't know, things you want to actually <laughs> buy. I don't know. I wanted to buy everything. I was like, I don't have enough money for this. Yeah, it was <laughs> very, very dangerous when you get in there. And so uh, what else did we do on that first night? We, we wandered around, checked out some stuff. Uh, ben, I, my, it's, my brain is, is going <laughs> crazy. Ben, cool. what, what, what else did we do? in the park on Saturday night. Saturday night, our main goals were to go and check out all of the scare zones. Okay. And all of the, any food we wanted to do, kind of get a lay of the land for what the, the you know, like houses were and like right. where they were. And I just mean, like, like theme parks are like overwhelming yeah. in general, period. Especially when you haven't been there in a while, there's new stuff and there's an event going on. But Halloween Horror Nights is that on uh, steroids, okay? <laughs> uh, it is a lot. Like even when you first walk in, like we're like normally like, yeah, let's take some pictures. Let's get a map. All my normal park rituals were just destroyed. I'm just like, pumpkin master, screens, <laughs> merchandise, let I, me buy it all. I will say, Ben and I figured out something. I, you may you may have figured this out as well. Uh, we, we, we wore our annual pass fanny packs Oh my gosh, those things were lifesavers. Like yes. I, I never felt more like a dad ever, but <laughs> those were the best things ever. Like, like seriously, I wore mine. I was like, I rock so much stuff in that. I didn't have to put anything in my pockets. Didn't need a backpack. Just it had my perfect. little fanny pack. It fits a, a fix a part map in there perfectly. I got my Halloween Horror Nights map. It was awesome. Look, this is going to be very, very niche for any listeners <laughs> out there. But if you're ever a producer production person that's out at a Halloween theme park event, Man, you can fit cameras, you can fit uh, audio <laughs> equipment. I, we were walking around the park and I would just be like, hold on, flip out like a whole phone gimbal the thing. Fanny pack. Yeah. It, it was perfect. It was, it was so good. So good. Sword.roosty.com. Pick up your annual fast fanny pack right now. But yeah, we did. We checked out the uh, the scare zones. So let's dive into the scare zones. We'll go into those and then we'll get into the, into the actual houses here in a bit too. So uh, you walk in, the very first thing you see is the horrors of Halloween scare zone. That's the one with the pumpkin lord. Yes. He's just kind of like, you literally walk in, he's just like, oh, bro, I'm the pumpkin. He's like pumpkin master, like, yeah. welcome to my realm. I am pumpkin master. Hear me roar. I got to say, pumpkin lord, uh, pretty sassy. Yes. Pretty sassy. <laughs> so uh, as you can imagine, uh, there's a lot of people who are running around trying to be like trying to impress their friends and mm -hmm. kind of, you know, be like, oh, he's kind of like the tough, tough guy. Yeah, or tough kid or whatever. I'm going to be I'm going to make fun of the pumpkin lord. And so like we we witnessed these kids run up, <laughs> probably teenagers, and yeah. like they were all being sassy to the pumpkin lord. And he kind of like threw his hands on like, what? What do you want to do? What do you want to do? OK, fine. And it's just, like, <laughs> he's it's so, like, like, you're trying to make fun of me. Like, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I don't care about you. <laughs> it, it was great. It was great. And also, so the horrors of Halloween, it kind of like summarized the entire um, um, like the entire like Halloween Horror Nights in general, like they had different stuff from like on, kind of all over the different yeah. houses. It's like a palette, like appetizer yeah, to yeah. like what's in store in the rest of the park. Have little bits from like all yeah. the different scare zones. And not only that, but Little Boo was there too. So they had this big arch with a bunch of pumpkins, uh, and that's like their thing now because last year they had the whole you know the Pumpkin Lord house. And, uh, and so they had all the, the pumpkins out in front of that. And they're like, well, we have all these pumpkins. Let's do something with them. So this big archway kind of resting between what used to be Shrek 4D and the Minions attraction and uh, or the uh, Despicable Me attraction. And on it, at the very top, they had all these pumpkins attached to it and kind of like sort of towards the middle was Lil Boo. And I kept I kept <laughs> trying to stop. And you go, look, B, look, BK, it's Lil Boo. It's Lil yes, Boo. Yes, let's stop like, in the middle of the scare zone. Yeah. Please, let's just stop in the middle and look up, directly up, and at targeted me attack. I'm not stopping you, you there. You never stopped. It was no. Like, I was trying to show you Lil I Boo. I full force, I cooked it in high gear. I said, let me get in fourth gear and just walk. Yeah. I'll wait for you at the I, end. I was looking up like, oh, it's so cute. But BK, <laughs> nope. where'd you go? I was not doing it. No, no. <laughs> uh, then from around the, so you go past that and uh, move around to the right, just sort of in front of the tribute store and then over by Revenge of the Mummy. We get to Sweet, Sweet Revenge, uh, which is the major sweets candy company and like a whole sort of thing there. This was like a lot of sort of 
like they were like cutesy characters, but kind of just off, and it yeah. was it was kind of unsettling. They had like they had like a kid dressed as like a robot who was like running around, but it was like kind of freaky, and like there was a lot of weird stuff. Yeah, there. I think that Scare Zone is supposed to be it, it extends further into be a play on like a Halloween day parade. Yeah, um, yeah. So there's a lot of like allusions to like what you think an old timey parade would be like. There's like floats. There's like the candy store or like the butcher truck like why is he <laughs> yeah. out that night but there was like some really awesome scare actors and yeah by awesome i mean they weren't scary and presenting but got you because i'm like that's a child i'm like yeah, yeah. well no one's wearing costumes you can't wear masks to halloween horror night so i'm like what is this why is this child following me <laughs> yeah. in a robot costume like just leave me alone i don't want to take you with me like you're not a part of my group like let me just keep moving forward yeah there, there were a couple of scares throughout halloween horror nights that involved uh, shorter people like you know that that were definitely free i imagine they didn't hire actual children right, right, right. i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> say, yes uh, the halloween horror nights does not in fact implore children yeah <laughs> they are of age to be hired we, we assume not at least but uh <laughs> But yeah, there were definitely some shorter folks, which which will will kind of kind of scare you, you know. Yeah. And they definitely had some people there that were pretty freaky. There was like this mayor dude that was super gross. So so the lore behind that scare zone is that there's like a mayor named Mayor Sweets who has a candy company that he's basically <sighs> pumped full of drugs and handed out to kids who then go crazy and start killing each other and their parents. Oh, and like, explains a lot. There are parts that we kind of missed a little bit that more during the day when we walked through the next day, I was able to see, like you mentioned, right, that the truck full of like weapons and stuff. Like, that were being what is to going kids. on? Yeah. I guess the idea is that this mayor is like making these kids go crazy and go on this like terrifying murder I'm only an elected official here. <laughs> but there was one, like, I know you guys were focused on like people, like these like kids stepping around corners yeah. and scaring you. At one point, like I had like a parent, like horror figure, like yelling for their kids oh, wow. that oh, okay. just like stepped around and like scared the absolute like soul out of my body experience. <laughs> that's but, yeah, awesome. That's the story behind it. Okay, cool. So that's one of the things too, like, there, like, like Ben was saying, there are stories behind a lot of these things, including like the the, the non IP houses as well. Like mm -hmm. they have these narratives through it, which is fantastic. Um, so from there, we went on towards uh, towards where the the exit of Fast and Furious is. Yeah, and it was the Conjure the Dark Scare Zone, and this is the one where it was just like some freaky creatures. They had like they had these sort of rooms where like these creatures would hide in and jump out mm -hmm. at you, and they had like a witch queen as well. Yeah, and she had a show, but we never seemed to time it just right. Like so. She was up on stage doing this conjuring over like a giant cauldron, and apparently she would do something about like every fifteen minutes or so. But we never timed it right mm -hmm. where we kind of see the little performance they had. It wasn't yeah, we, it was like a big show, but it was kind of like oh, it's, I'm going to do a bit now. Yeah, it's it's really cool to see it because that's one that I think also had like a strong story. Like you also see a lot of like I think virgin sacrifices that yeah, are being yeah. hung up on these like cave things, <laughs> which is like weird because you're distracted wanting to look at the performance and you're forgetting like I'm surrounded by caves. I'm probably going to get jump scared here. <laughs> looking at this beautiful maiden conjuring some sort of pyramid head guy yeah there and there were some uh, creepy like disemboweled people yeah. like pinned to walls and very whatnot. gross <laughs> it, was, it was pretty gross uh that being said we're gonna have a lot of video content for this up on our youtube channel youtube.com slash annual pass and uh be warned if you're a little bit squeamish or don't like that we're probably we'll probably have a warning in the video itself but just let you know there there's some freaky stuff that we had there so tuesday for first members wednesdays for everybody else there you go tuesdays for first members wednesdays for everyone else youtube.com slash annual pass got our vlogs up there now you can go watch it you can see me and Dave Cobb probably at Volcano Bay. I assume that's out by now, right? <laughs> Next week. But yeah, if you want to see a lot of shirtless white guys, that's so cute. YouTube.com slash annual pass. Uh, so then around in the, um, what was it? The uh, uh, Central Park area, mm -hmm. which was kind of the most narrow sort of corridor. There was a scare zone called Scarecrow Cursed Soil. And now this one, uh, it, there, there's two this one and the next one are probably my favorite yeah. of the two i love this area because it's it is so narrow it's so there's tight. a lot of yeah. bottlenecking and so there's a lot of opportunities for people to jump out and get you but some of the costumes they had in this was really really cool some like scarecrow type folks and uh they had like a giant raven up like a, a raven bird person mm -hmm. and they had the the effect where it looks like wood like wood panels, but it was actually like that rubber stuff that they can kind of pull and like jump through. Mm -hmm. So there was like a wall, it was like an outhouse or something, and all of a sudden like a body, like a human would pop out at you and like <laughs> reach out. It's freaky as heck. And yeah. I really, really like that it one. It was a lot. super cool. The vibe there was like really strong. I think just like to your point of like the location, like all yeah. the other scare zones, they're kind of in familiar places. So you can kind of you know, if you don't want to be scared, you can look outward. Yeah. Here, you, there's no looking 
outward. You were in like a, a field and the scaffolding that they had were like, I didn't look up. I, I, I looked up all of a sudden someone's in my face. Yeah. I'm like, okay, hi, yes, hello. <laughs> I'm going to keep walking. <laughs> we, we learned about that. We did, We actually got to do a backstage tour of some of the haunted houses and they have things called ping pong scares, which is basically like you react to one thing and then as you're reacting to that, someone sets up the next thing so you can bounce, like bounce people off of scares. They're very good about that. It's like <laughs> distracting you over here with a noise or a light or a sound, and then all of a sudden something's on your other side. And that was such a cool thing to kind of like learn the the tricks of the trade and whatnot. Um, but you're right. You're right. I really like the scare zone too because, like you were saying, the other scare zones they still feel like they're kind of like within a different area. Right. Like you know, the next one, the graveyard they had set up. It's like it's on Hollywood Boulevard or Sunset Boulevard, mm -hmm. whatever they call it over there. And it, you know, if you kind of look past sort of the sets they have, it's like oh, I can still see right. Born Stuntacular, but in the Central Park area, it's just trees and they, mm -hmm. they enclose you in. Yeah. And so it feels like a whole thing. So oh, like I was transparent. I was like, okay, no offense. I, I love all the uniqueness and the yeah. variety throughout the park, which is like really cool. But like if it was all themed, like <laughs> hay ride type stuff, I think I would have lost my mind. <laughs> like that, that the styles and all of the like makeup on oh, yeah. the scare actors are just so good. And they're acting like oh, yeah. I've again, we've talked about going a lot of times like in the past mm -hmm. and like to hear like they have techniques now and they have really like fine-tuned their craft yeah, they have classes and, it's yeah it's awesome and one thing that i learned too like jumping ahead to the like the behind the scenes thing is that they cast specific actors for specific houses i didn't realize that i just assumed it's like you sort of show up like oh we need you here at this house today or like we need you over here. we need to fill in people over here it's like no, no no people have roles and like they take those roles very seriously it's like i'm gonna be you know the hook fish bad guy in this corner and like that's my job that's like, I'm, my job i'm gonna be there for all of halloween horror nights and it's like that's that's pretty cool yeah. actually and i think they only have about maybe two sets of actors per character yeah. they rotate them out i think 45 minutes they yeah. said so like it's really awesome to like hear like cool they're giving them breaks but also that means like when you're a character, you're that character yeah. and you and that one other person are like need to be in sync and like own it and and have that like banter and repertoire because I I'm getting every time I'm there. I'm like, I just want to be a character just once, <laughs> just once. Please let me do it. And that being said, I'm sure there's some of some of the pass holders out there listening right now that have been scare actors in the oh, past. Yeah. We would love to talk to you about your experiences because we've been, we've been very, very fortunate to talk to some of the people involved in the creation of it. But I would love to talk to some people on the ground floor of it, like some people actually involved the actual you know being in the houses and doing the scares oh heck yeah i would love to hear from you guys so let us know in the comments or, or you know drop us an email or whatever you want to do annual underscore pass on twitter please let us know because i'd love to talk to you guys um but then the last the last uh scare zone that we went to was graveyard deadly unrest and so this i mean i think that the scarecrow area was probably my favorite this one is very close second though mm -hmm. um so this was you went to the nettlewood cemetery and walk through it and there was some creepy creepy stuff in there there was like lots of gargoyles and there was like a statue with like a like a white covered face they had twins there there were there were two twins that were like made up identical like they were dead souls but they were like just kind of like skipping along each other and they would turn and look at you and it was uh super freaky and uh yeah i like that one a lot it was very very cool no, that one was really fun i think what made that one special was it was kind of like more casual scares like yeah. kind of like the parade but because it's like a cemetery like i guess you're pulling from your zombie or undead knowledge so you're kind of ready for the scare but what the actors are so good at is like being aware of that and being like i'm gonna be normal and you're not scared and then do something <laughs> like random yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. unexpected or like super commit to coming i went to look back for uh, Kai. Kai was with us helping produce and it wasn't Kai. <laughs> like, I guess the, one of the actors was following me through the site. I kept looking back there because she's recording. I looked back and it was, that was a whole man, <laughs> <laughs> an undead man in my face. I said, oh, I'm okay, hi. And then I scurried off away. So it was a really good one. That's I liked awesome. the vibe there. Yeah, I, I love that the characters they had there made up were very classic kind yeah. of horror, you know, like very like white face paint with yeah. like, you know, like the eyes darken and stuff. As a matter of fact, we did the, so we did the RIP tour, mm -hmm. which is we got to go uh, and then we were taken from house to house by a, a couple tour guides who were fantastic. And uh, while we were before we got started, we were actually in like kind of the, the Copacabana Club where we were just relaxing, getting some snacks and stuff before we go. And we're sitting there and this woman walks up like this, you know, this undead woman walks up and she's wearing this really pretty old dress. And I'm like, oh, you, that looks like the dress that my wife, you know, wore to my wedding. And I have like, you know, I have Katie's photo on my phone and I showed her and she like did this whole thing. She spent like, like 10 minutes yeah. with us. 
going through this whole thing where she asked if Katie, I mean, she wasn't saying anything, but she was like, is your wife dead? Do you like dead people? And it became, old. <laughs> and I think she proposed to somebody at yeah. some point. It was, it was awesome. I think we got a lot of video of that. So hopefully that'll hit, you know, our YouTube channel at some point, but uh, it was really, really cool. And uh, so many, I, I give so many props to those actors because man, they, they, they embody those roles and they have, they have a blast with it too. So. Oh yeah. You have to like commit. I think that's like half of the fun part is them being fully invested in the character just makes it such an immersive experience. Like yeah. I, the little horror fanatic me was <laughs> living my best life. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and, uh, and dive into it. We also, we since we spent some time wandering around the parks. We'll probably get into that another day, mm -hmm. including when I finally took you to the horror makeup show. Yes. It was awesome, right? Sick, awesome, it like was, the best thing ever. It was so good, and not only that, but Mally, who was with us, she got picked to be the, the volunteer up on stage. Couldn't believe it. I was like, is this real? This is not real. It was so great, it was so great. <laughs> it was funny because before the show, Mally and I were sitting there looking over the area where they typically pick the volunteer, and we were like trying to spot who they were gonna pick. Because there's always someone who like doesn't wanna go on stage. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, it's gonna be probably her who's like looking at her phone right now, or the you know the woman in front of her. And then throughout the, when the show happened, the guy kind of wandered around and like, like pointed at her and was like, Oh my gosh, here we go. And so it was great. And we have lots of video and photo that we'll, we'll post up on our, our, our YouTube channel. You know, all of that was awesome, but we're here to talk about Halloween Horror Nights now. So let, let's see, okay, we'll, we'll talk about all the horror makeup show and all the other cool stuff we got to do non Halloween Horror Nights, but let's get into it now. Let's talk about the houses we went through. So again, I mentioned that we went on the RIP tour. We had uh, some amazing guides and we walked through and let's just go through the houses we went through in the order that we got to go in. So starting out, number one, one of the houses I was most looking forward to the weekend. This, I, wow. This was cool. Like, so this was, I was very curious about this one because The Weeknd's an, a music artist. And mm. it's like, he makes some really cool songs and stuff. Like you've seen him in the Super Bowl a couple years ago. Awesome music videos, really spooky music videos. If, if you're wondering why would they make a weekend haunted house, go watch some of his, vi some of his videos. They are freaky. And so, uh, yeah, and freaky is a different one. We'll get to that one later. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so like the cool thing is the queue for the weekend house, they actually set it up with like lights and then weekend music is playing. So it's yeah. almost like a dance party getting into the house, which is kind of cool. It's a neat way to sort of distract you from waiting in line for an hour. And um, so you get into the weekend and uh, first thing you see is uh, the weekend himself is sitting there and he's got like this, this sort of thing attached to his head. And it's basically like pulling all of these videos and images out of his head. And then you step into everything he was just imagining. And it was awesome because music was blaring the whole time. There were some awesome scares in there. The lights and like sound effects were really, really cool. And uh, anything in particular that you remember that freaked you out? I remember those masks. Like yeah. they, there's like these mirror mask things that people were wearing inside. That was really, really freaky. Yeah, I think it was unsettling seeing like the weekend, like kind of like half bandaged up in a sense like <laughs> yeah. the way he looked like he was looking like he was a horror movie character i guess that's just not what i was expecting yeah but i should have known that he's on the promotional art like you can get the vibe <laughs> i think the moment that stood the most to me in that house though was the plastic surgery scene oh yeah like they have this like woman or person on like a a surgical table and like she is not getting a very good facelift i no, can tell you no. that she was getting stabbed a it whole was lot and bad it was gruesome and like the noise the associated with it too <laughs> yeah it's, it's pretty freaky i remember at one point too you walk through and there was a bunch of like people standing and it was like a bunch of like oh, yeah, dummies yeah. but not all of them were dummies like some of them were real people and that was the freaky thing because you'd mm -hmm. be walking through like oh god and the one would jump out mm -hmm. at you and it's like that happened a couple times in halloween or Nights. <laughs> yeah like, oh man that that's what gets me is like when i don't know what's real and what's not right right yeah i think the mirrors there were also really good yeah, which yeah. was like directly like pulled out from a lot of the music videos yeah that was that the, the super bowl thing. the super bowl one yeah, and i was like, like stage. oh my god so i'm like walking through that i'm like no don't scare me and they didn't need to scare you there <laughs> yeah. actually wasn't any like jump scares in the mirror part like the mirrors were enough for me yeah it was enough to be really I scared really myself <laughs> So that was an awesome house. Had a lot of fun through that. Uh, after that, we jumped over next door to uh, Monsters Legends Collide, Universal Monsters Legends Collide, which was awesome. One of my favorites. I love this house. So this was very reminiscent of last year's house, the uh, the Bride of Frankenstein Returns, um, where it was Universal Classic Monsters. We had the Mummy, we had Dracula, and we had Wolfman. Yes all fighting over this amulet thing. And the cool thing is too, like they've done it a couple years in the past where the end of the house is different depending on the night. So mm -hmm. like every night it's like a different ending. Like last year it was the uh, universe, or it was the, uh, um, it was the, the legend, or no, the, what was it, the horror icons collide or horror icons unleashed is what it was. And every, like the end of the night, it was like a different person was sort of the winner of the house. This one, it was either, it you either had the mummy, you had Dracula or you had the wolf band be the winner of the house at the end of the night. 
I loved that. I didn't know. I didn't know they did that. That's so cool. Because that was that was sick to me, and uh, I was so happy because the person who I wanted to win won that night. Yay! Yay Hooray, mommy! mommy! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is cool. So the, the story. There's a really cool story behind this one, where the idea was like there's this amulet that essentially all the all the different monsters wanted to get because mm -hmm. uh, the mummy. I think it would bring the mummy back to life. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, the uh, the like Dracula. If he got the amulet, it would make him where he could be a daywalker. Yep. He could walk through like a, a, a normal or whatever. And the the Wolfman, he would basically not have to turn into a wolf man mm -hmm. anymore i believe and so these these three monsters are fighting over this amulet and like throughout the house is like you know different creatures jumping out and freaking you out and scaring you and it was really really well done it was dressed up like this ancient tomb kind of yeah. like, like egypt type look to it and it was it was an awesome house i loved it it, it really really told a story i think there are a couple of other houses we we're going to get to today that definitely laid out a story but to kind of start with that with like iconic monsters yeah. and like we're big fans of like those universal ips so like you were familiar, you knew the story already, so you're ready to like learn and see like all the effects and like dude everyone looked good like <laughs> yeah. dracula looked good all of them fighting around you like when you're walking through you felt like you were in the midst of a battle yeah and it was it was pretty cool because towards the end again uh we had dracula pinned up against the wall with a wooden yeah, stake, stake in his heart yeah. <laughs> and then he rounded the corner and the mummy was holding wolfman's head and i was like oh Sick. my gosh <laughs> and he had he had the, the amulet on him as well so that was really really cool so from there, we moved on to two houses, very, very quick back-to-back -back houses, uh, one in which you loved. Uh, the first one we went to was Descendants of Destruction, which was very cool. I liked that one. So this was the idea was, uh, it, it was, was this the one with the, the air conditioner that turned or was that bugs? That, no, that was bugs. no, no, no. This is the one where it's like apocalypto, like uh, they, we have moved underground because it's yeah. the apocalypto and now we're mutants, question mark. Yeah. Pretty much platoon, but they didn't <laughs> turn into squid people. Okay, yet. <laughs> this, this one had one of the most amazing set pieces I think I saw in any of the houses where we went, we, like we went, the idea is you're going deeper and deeper underground and at one point, we were in a subway station yeah. and there was a train car, like a subway car had derailed and crashed and it was massive. It was huge. Yeah, it, it was, was like, the whole room. Yeah, we, we eventually stepped into the train car, but like outside of it, you could see the full one down and like the rest of it up. And mm -hmm. I don't know if it was forced perspective or what, but it looked like it was a full train that they had just brought into this house. It, it was, was so sick. cool. The set pieces in that were really strong. And as a New Yorker, you know, <laughs> I felt right at home coming in and having that like dinge, like aesthetic. And I'm a big fan of like dystopias and yeah. things like that and it felt like I was like walking into a video game almost as like the house kind of unfolded and dived deeper underground to reveal these weird people I was more interested in seeing them I wasn't scared I was like I want to see what that person looks like and what does that person look like yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, it was it was really, really awesome. That was the one where they were like covered in black light paint towards yeah, the end, right? Yeah, yeah, they were yeah. like glowing. Like yeah. it was like a fungus type thing started growing on them. And I'm like, what is this yeah, aesthetic? Like, like, like Last of Us style, yeah. that kind of creepy, like <laughs> like not zombies per, per chance, but yeah, it was it was pretty awesome. Uh from there, we moved on to Bugs Eaten Alive, which might give you some horrible flashbacks, which I'm I'm very excited to see your reaction no. to. <laughs> this one was fantastic. Uh, the our, our, our tour guide set it up very well, where he's basically saying there was tons and tons and tons of bugs in this one. And the idea was, it's like 1950s or kind of like a period piece where they had this new contraption, which was like an air conditioner, heater, yeah. and also like like bug repellent. Mm -hmm. And something went wrong. And then, of course, all the bugs got huge and like killed all the people. Get and your all-purpose bug exterminator here <laughs> right now. That's right. We'll get all of the bugs out of your house or maybe you'll turn crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it was so cool, though. Yeah, yeah. And that was one where it was like, it was pretty freaky because that was the one where like people started having like holes on their face and stuff and yeah and like they they have something called uh, uh what is it sif yeah it's sif it's it's stuff in your face which is uh they they haven't they the last worst. year they didn't do it because of like covid stuff but this year it's it's back and it's like stuff is always kind of down you have to kind of like Dangling. push your way through stuff and they had like these little thin like almost like fishing line it was real small you can't really see it but you could feel it and it's like walking through you just feel stuff touching you and at one point you got sprayed with water and there were bugs everywhere. A lot of fishing line and like twine that had like waxy material on yeah, it, so it would it drag stick. through your face and hair and stick <laughs> yeah. as you walk through the house. I hated it, Jack. It was the <laughs> that was the worst or scariest like house for me. I don't have what, uh, what is the like condition where you are afraid of the holes in the face. There's like a specific name for 
um, that phobia. I'll look it up and butcher the name. Yeah. So. yeah, yeah. Um, but I i didn't have that and uh -huh. I was still scared out of like my mind because they did such a great job at like making you feel claustrophobic in yeah. that house and another house in particular where you felt like you couldn't really move or escape. A lot of long corridors with like bug visuals and sounds and like I'm a sound girl. So yeah. when I hear the Oh yeah, yeah. I, I literally I'm walking like this like waving my hands in front of my face and I'm like I'm trying not to cry I literally was like can I get just get me out get me out get me out oh it was awesome and also this house included one of our first giant bugs like one of the first big like set piece scare type things where you actually walked in kind of like the mouth of this enormous bug that was all oh, around you I did not want to I wanted to turn around but you can't they tell you to keep moving forward I was just like can I leave please it was, it was so good it was so good <laughs> And so from there, I believe we actually went to the show, right? I think it was we did those four, and then we hit up the show. Yeah, we did. So we went and saw Nightmare Fuel Wildfire, oh which if you saw Nightmare Fuel last year, it's basically like they've added on to it. They kind of like changed it up a little bit, but it is an amazing show. And uh, yeah, it, it was uh, a very... Uh, I wouldn't say this is a kid friendly show. There's, no. <laughs> yeah, keep keep the kids at Diagon Alley or something. Yeah, it was, I um, don't know. Yeah, you put the kids in daycare for that one. Yeah, this. <laughs> uh, I'll just say like the show itself is hot in every sort of sense of the term, like a lot of fire and other people scantily clad and <laughs> magics and and contortionists mm -hmm. and and very fit people and it was written awesome music. Yeah, it, it was. Like last year's show, it was we described it as like overwhelming because right. there was so much stuff going on, and it feels like they pared it back a little bit, where it's not as overwhelming. It's kind of a little bit more focused this year, which I understand, but I kind of like the aspect of like I don't know where to look. Mm -hmm. um, but this year was a very similar. They brought back a lot of the same people who worked on last year's show, and uh, some of the same magic stuff. Like there's a, there's a, a gag they do with a bed. I, it's so good. It's like the first. It's the opening of the show, and it's like how? how? Mm -hmm. and, like you're watching one person and they become a different person in front of you immediately, and it's it's so incredible like, it's awesome i don't know how they do it but uh more magic stuff in the show it was it was cool what was your favorite part of the show um let's see <laughs> We're like, roll through the the roll as a of, of queer stuff. woman my favorite part was that there was great representation <laughs> throughout the show yeah. um but more so though i think you said it's hot yes it's hot and on fire and they're very smexy but <laughs> it actually had a narrative which yeah. was surprising to me it really did tell an ongoing story amongst all of the magic and the contortion and acrobatics and it had a really cool message that i just like wasn't expecting that yeah. like Entry where I was like, dang, like this maybe needs to be like a movie or something or like some sort of series. Like, can we get a little bit of that action? Because I have permanent burned images in my mind of certain situations that were unveiled to me front and center. Certain people on leashes and whatnot. It was I, images we can't show on a family. We yeah. can't. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just listen. I you you need to just have a night with the the adults in the room. It, that was just not PG-14. Okay, it no, just wasn't. No, this this was this was pretty intense. Yeah, but yeah, like you said, it, it is very much like the story of a guy who doesn't want to sleep because when he when he sleeps he has nightmares and mm -hmm. this is his living nightmare and it's like him experiencing this nightmare and you watch it happen live on stage. My favorite part of the show is just just watching BK and Kai react to the whole show. I, there was a lot of yes, daddies and mommies. <laughs> but on top of that, like there is even like illusions and like yeah. magic tricks yeah, that almost is that like it was really fun. They did that the same thing in the show last year. Yeah. But it was really fun to watch you guys react to like some of that stuff that happened. I yeah. lost my mind. I literally lost my mind. I wanted to take videos. I, I took one at the beginning, like a little picture, a little boomerang, and I couldn't. I was like, I need to see it with my own eyes. Yeah. I don't want to see it through the lens. You have to appreciate it and yeah. see that in real life. It's so worth it. Like, if you Very go to Halloween cool Horror Nights, you've got to take your time to see that yeah. show. And I'm curious for next year for Halloween Horror Nights 32, if they'll bring that same show back or if they'll kind of rework or it or whatever. It's been or two years now, so I don't know if they'll bring back and, you know, do something new, but it was awesome. Very, very cool <laughs> show. And uh, one of my favorite parts of Halloween Horror Nights for the last two years oh, now. Oh, yeah. So from there, we ended up taking a little break and cool off for a bit. And then uh, we went on and went to Hell, or excuse me, we went to Blumhouse. Um, was it the horrors of Blumhouse? Yes. It was two houses in one. It was based off two movies. Mm -hmm. It was Freaky and Black Phone. Mm -hmm. So Freaky, the Vince Vaughn movie, and Black Phone, the other horror movie. And uh, I'll, I'll admit, I hadn't seen either of these movies. How, oh, 
That's the whole point, Jack. How could you not see him? You had weeks to plan. I know. I should I should have watched him in advance, but it was cool. It was neat because like the whole idea of Freaky is it's kind of like Freaky Friday, except it's like a cheerleader and a serial killer yeah. get body swapped. <laughs> and so it's then this, you know, this cheerleader who's like a murderous, you know, going on a murderous rampage, and then it was, you know, this old man who's like acting like a cheerleader. So <laughs> It's supposed to be. It's, it's supposed to be really, really good. It I really is need to really it good. It's funny. I loved these houses because I'm a big like movie fan, and these really felt like you were in the movies. Like yeah. they had all of the major set pieces and moments that I think you're looking for when you're a big fan of the films. So that's why I, I liked them. They were a little short because there yeah. was two of them, but uh, the cheerleader was killing it. <laughs> like I feel like it's so easy to be like funny in a role like that, and like. I, homegirl was menacing nice. i was like okay hi nice lady uh, <laughs> don't touch me moving on moving yeah on, thank you. now how did how did black phone sort of work for you because that i mean there was some creepy stuff in there like mm. not knowing the movie like there was a couple uh, moments when we were in like jail cells that were just like this is weird yeah. and spooky and just the the lighting they had where mm-hmm. it would literally be like a pitch black room mm-hmm. but it was just the black phone lit up with like a soft light and i was like that i don't know what's going on with that but i don't like that at all it's so good so yeah. i'll geek out a little bit because i really like this one this is probably one of one of my favorites because i loved the film uh but it does show like the basement scene which is what you're talking about and the kid gets kidnapped and the captor is the guy with the mask. Um, But the premise of the movie is that there's ghosts that are speaking to the kidnapped kid through the phone. Uh So those tight corridors with the light on the phone were really good because you're hearing the children's voices talking to you and looking at the phone and it's ringing and it happens. Like you turn, you see the phone again, you see the phone again. Like it, it was submersive. It was awesome. And I was like in the movie. I wasn't scared, but I was like excited. I'm like, oh my God, we're in the kitchen. Oh my God, it's the killer. Oh wait, that's not a real person. Oh wait, there's the real person. Like it was really, really fun. And I enjoyed it. It definitely felt like the film. And I highly recommend you checking out that movie. Yeah, the yeah. movie is really good. I mean, it seems like for you, like last year they had the Beetlejuice house, which uh, like I love Beetlejuice. And so it's like, I know this movie back right. to front. So it was like going through, I'm like, oh my God, I'm in the attic. Exactly. Like, oh, you know, like, I'm in the club. It's like, this is kind of cool so I, I love that kind of stuff and even like the the one house i regret to this day that i missed was the ghostbusters house how did you miss that i, I w- wasn't able to make it uh, out it was, it was like i think it was like 2018 2019. okay okay and so we didn't have annual pass back then and i have an excuse to get out there and so anyway hopefully someday they'll bring back you know ghostbusters or maybe they'll do you know go you know, like ghostbusters afterlife or something or, or whatever the next ghostbusters may be so uh from there we moved on to there's kind of like a batch of houses all kind of near each other right. and we went to uh hellblock horror which our guide said uh this was one it was kind of the last house they built and uh, the, apparently it was going to be like an IP house. They were going to work on something else and kind of fell through last minute. Mm-hmm. And they're like, well, we need to put something together. And honestly, it's like uh, jail is kind of easy. <laughs> it's right. Like, like like set wise. Okay. We just need some bars and yeah. some chains and fences. <laughs> yeah. So, so the idea for Hellblock Horror was uh, it is a like an, an internet or not an international, like an interdimensional prison where they house all of these evil monsters and something's going wrong where like the power cell that holds them all together it keeps everything like is it's basically falling apart and they have to destroy the jail before all these evil monsters get out so uh yeah and so it sort of tells that story is really it's an opportunity for them to kind of show off some classic monsters from different houses. Like there were a lot of stuff. There were a lot of other monsters that I think I had seen. I want to say there was like a tooth fairy in there from last year's houses. And like there was like some aliens, I think maybe from Welcome to Scary last year. There's a whole bunch of different stuff, like some classic stuff. So this is definitely one for their Halloween Horror Nights, like aficionados. They would go in and be like, I recognize this person. This one was from this house. And this, and so it was a kind of fun throwback. And so, but, but pretty simple house, but still it's, it's a jail falling apart. Mm-hmm. And a lot of like gunfire and like security guards getting killed and it was it was pretty fun i, I liked it it I was it. cool like uh for a simple concept i think it was like really executed well yeah. and like the story brings you in from start to finish i think the end was really dope like yeah. it's like we gotta blow the reactor and the cops like okay and like all the kind of prisoners are closing in so yeah. that like high octane energy was different than i think a lot of the other houses you felt like you were an active participant in in whatever scenario was going on versus, I don't know, being tortured by bugs. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of flashing lights in this one, too. Yes. There were a lot of, like, you know, sort of explosions and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Like, I think there was one prisoner being, like, electrocuted. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, some neat stuff there. And this is one thing, too, I noticed that I'm thinking about it now that I think we saw really in this one. We saw more <laughs> video stuff happening in these in these houses than You're ever right. before. So, and this one, there were definitely some scenes where, like, a window and you could see, like, a, you know, like a guard a being attacked. Or something. And then, like, even, like, Dead Man's Pier had some 
video. Mm. There, there's like some video. The bug stuff. ones had video cockroaches as well. Yeah. Like they've implemented tastefully though. Yeah, yeah. When we we got a we got our, our our lights on tour with Ramon, who was one of the guys who worked on Fiesta de Chupacabras and uh, Dead Man's Pier. Uh, he was talking about this is Halloween Horror Nights 31. So since it's not an anniversary year, they didn't really have they didn't have a lot of IP they had to worry about. They kind of got to play around with it a bit more. And so like these years, the ones were like, let's try some new stuff. And so we I think we saw that this year and like a lot of video and whatnot. And so I think we I, I dug that we saw some experimentation. Totally. Yeah, I definitely felt that, especially with um that like which one that came up. I think we the did Spirits that one. Spirits of the Coven. That's what it's yeah, called. So, okay. Yeah, Spirits of the Coven was the next house we did after that. And that one is. It was really cool. We got to go to a speakeasy. You had to speak the the words. What was it? Uh, oh, uh, crap. W- Witch's Brew. Yeah, Witch's Brew. That was yeah. what it was. You had, to, you had to say the word to get in. And it was like you go into the speakeasy and it was like all nice and lovely. And then slowly the witches got less beautiful and more menacing and more <laughs> like, you know, like Snow White looking witch yes. kind of thing. It was pretty freaky it was yeah. it was like a again like again a simple story but like immersive like you really felt like you were going underground there started to be like roots and stuff around you like i was like oh we're like in the cellar of the cellar yeah like yeah. this is underneath the speakeasy so i was like oh so this is what prohibition was <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it was neat too because like the walls they had like like glass bottles that yeah. made up like these walls and it they was were so lit cool. it was really really cool and so we should also point out too a lot of these so all of these houses or at least the the non-ip houses have backstories and on the uh is it uh, discovery universal like podcast? Their podcast yeah they give a lot of the backstories so if you want to hear the backstories of these houses you can go there listen to those and give them a shot and it's, it's really really cool and get more information on them and maybe like there's a lot of stuff that if you listen to those you would catch stuff in the houses that maybe other people might not catch. oh yeah for sure so that one was really cool. But yeah, Spirits of the Coven, that was a fun one. Mm-hmm. And then uh, from that, we went to uh, one of my favorites, which is Fiesta de Chupacabras. Yes. Which, oh my gosh, what a cool house. So first awesome. and foremost, uh, so we this was one of the two houses we got a backstage tour on. And uh, and Ramon, who is the designer of the house, he was saying that all of the the cast inside of this house were uh, basically Hispanic or, yeah. or from Latin America. And, and that was such a cool thing. Not a word of English in this house At either. At all, except for the tourists screaming for their dear lives <laughs> as they are being hunted as sacrifices for the chupacabra. Yeah, so love so it. This one, the idea is you go to this this small, uh, I think South American town. Yes, you're not. They don't. They don't really specifically say what it is. Right. But it's a town in South America. But the first thing you walk in, you see this beautiful like cityscape. You see like the tops of buildings, and you hear you hear fireworks going off and lights. It's really pretty scene. And then it very quickly gets gets freaky. Right, right <laughs> like, away. Like you walk in and there's like the uh, the mask maker who yeah. kind of is like the storyteller to bring you into the story. Because again, not a lot is spoken. There are things in um, other houses where you can kind of get hints of the story. Yeah. Um, but this one is very immersive. And the mask maker really is joining you into the festival because yeah. yeah you're here and this is awesome and it's cool but don't worry you know we might kill you by the end of the day so don't leave yeah, please so, so the idea is that chupacabras <laughs> come to the city and uh and every year they, they basically essentially need blood they need yeah. sacrifices and so the villagers of the city have turned this into a festival where it's like hey we're celebrating to get tourists to come in and that way the tourists are the ones who are eating and not the, the <laughs> citizens of this of this town so you become the sacrifice essentially for the tourists there and so uh, once you get inside they don't want to let you leave and um this one had some amazing puppets in it that was that was the thing that i was the most excited by because they actually had these giant chupacabra puppets because in my head a chupacabra was small but it's like there's different chupacabra right. legends. There are, and uh, and this one they were enormous. Like the heads of these things were a good probably two feet. Yeah, tall. you think a werewolf is scary? This was like double that size. I feel like yeah. just the head alone. Like, yeah, and like they were they were puppets that would like pop out from behind walls and catch you off guard. And then they had all the like the citizens and like the mast coming mm-hmm. out and trying to like attack you and whatnot. It it was very cool. Some really neat set pieces. There was one sort of like area that was like it's kind of like this sort of courtyard area. Yeah. It was like, oh, people could be out here playing you know checkers. It or, felt very real, like yeah. a very great like representation i feel about like a lot of different latino cultures or hispanic cultures and being able to like see that like it was really cool for me like there's some houses you'd walk in you're like this feels like someone's actual house like oh my god there's the router like just little (laughs) things that caught my attention and then i'm looking at the router and then uncle tio comes out and scares the ever-living hell out of me with a machete (laughs) like it was so awesome like subtle subtle scares until the big reveal of the chupacabra heads where you're like holy crap, this is like yep. real, real. Like it felt like I was brought in and teased. I was not prepared to see a real troop. I think maybe at the end I was like, oh, there's a little 
a choop, okay, I'm scared, and we're done. No, they like hit you left and right, yeah. multiple heads, multiple sets, and they're fully operated like yeah, they yeah, are they're puppets full, full they're not yeah. no automated nothing and it is nice because it does ease you into it like yeah. one, of the, one of the first things you see when you walk into the house is like the shadow yes of a chupacabra and then you start you start hearing them and walls and whatnot and then slowly you get one and then it kind of calms down and then it's like all they're all over the place yeah, yeah. And it's, it's so so well done also a uh, poopy bathroom in this one they, they, there's always a poopy bathroom in halloween horror nights this is the house that has the poopy bathroom <laughs> very smelly also chupacabra in there as well so uh very very cool house really like this one a lot and then we move from there to probably my favorite house of the whole night collectively everyone's favorite house this of one, ever <laughs> we went to uh uh dead man's pier which oh my gosh this this house so this house wasn't scary per se but it was beautiful yes like this house was so so cool so the idea is this is actually a house based off a scare zone from a few years ago where they had a bunch of like uh like you know watery sailors and whatnot who were, were dead and they're like, like ghosts of, of sailors and they turned it into a full-blown house where the idea was this uh this captain would go out to sea and his wife would uh, would sing her song at the harbor and always kind of like wish him back and then mm -hmm. one time they went out she was singing they never came back and so she eventually passed away but her ghost lives on and keeps calling these sailors back which now the ghost of these sailors return to the harbor and so it's this beautiful winter winters like you know you know winter pier all of this really nice fishing village you walk through it, there's a boathouse, like this really cool boat, and there's mm -hmm. a lot of fun Easter eggs in there. I think that one of the, the ships was named Orca, which is the ship from Jaws, which is kind of cool. And then eventually you make it to this this giant, giant set piece, whereas this crashed ship with the, the woman up on top of the ship singing, and she's like just glowing, like mm -hmm. she's covered in like, you know, the, the fluorescent paint. Yeah, she's giving that Wraith Banshee yeah. kind of vibe. And but... she's like, she's playing the violin, and then she would just scream, and it was haunting, and like, there's a lighthouse that you can see throughout the whole thing, it, it keeps popping back up again. And it's it was an amazing house. Like this whole one was just beautiful. That was an experience. Yeah. Like it 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 was like it etched in my memory. I was so obsessed with them every moment. Again, I was a little bit more scared probably than you, <laughs> uh, especially with like that one scare where the guy's like on a hook. Yeah, yeah. Towards the end, there's definitely yeah. there's a, 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 like a sailor who's been hooked to uh, and to he's like slot like actually moving back and forth, like actively like hits you with one scare and can slide and scare you again. Yeah. Oh. He's like an elastic band so he can kind of like lean into you and freak you out. It, it was definitely, definitely creepy. There were like barnacles everywhere. I don't know why I was so <laughs> fascinated by these barnacles, but I guess it was just such a minute detail yeah. that like stood out to me where I'm like, wow, they took the time to lay barnacles on places I wasn't even looking. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, and there were like what? seagulls up in rafters yeah. that you would never bother seeing. It You're was like, Okay, this yeah. is sick. Like they really put their heart in that one, yeah. and I, that, you could feel it. Like I felt the scream uh, of the woman. I was like, oh, can I just stand right here for five minutes? I just want to watch her on loop. Like, well, please. And the cool thing is, so we got to do. Uh, like I mentioned the, we got to do a lights on tour of Fiesta de, Fiesta de Chupacabras and uh, Dead Man's Pier. And, uh, and with that, the, we have video of all that stuff too, yes. which we'll be putting up on our YouTube channel. So youtube.com slash annual pass. We're working on that stuff now, but that will be up and you can see what we were allowed to film in there. And, uh, and also shout out to Ramon who gave us the tour, which I didn't put it together at the time, but Ramon, he's, he's a guy I follow on Twitter actually. And he's responsible for the new universal great movie escape. Ooh. So he's working on that, which is super cool. And I wish I would have thought to ask him about that too. But... <laughs> While we had him. Hey, wait. Yeah, Ramon, Quick what's question. Up, man? <laughs> so uh, very, very cool. Super nice guy. And it was a lot of fun going on that tour. And then uh, last but not least, the final house that we got to go through, which uh, probably included my my favorite scare of the whole night, mm. Halloween. Yes. Which they've done Halloween houses, like Halloween the movie is what I should say. They've done Halloween the movie houses before, but this one was kind of a new take on it mm -hmm. where it was like sort of telling the story from perspectives you never really seen before mm -hmm. and there was some awesome awesome stuff in this oh, yeah. including like a full-blown house like a, you know yes. like with strode realty real realty out in front and it was it was so neat but the thing that freaked me out the most was at one point we were walking through a hallway and a very short person popped out with a knife and it was just like oh my god yeah <laughs> it was like <laughs> made to look like a child yeah like, no it was supposed to be baby mike myers yeah. like i think that's what's really cool about like the halloween house again top top five for sure is its storytelling like it brings you into like a lot of the films and it brings you outside which i feel like a lot of the halloween movies you're in a house you're yeah. in one location this like tells you 
the life of Mike Myers through like a lot of like moments that you can recognize or you can put in your brain if you know of the the killer. Yeah. So like to see baby Mike Myers dressed in a clown outfit um, <laughs> running around, seeing the wire hanger moment with his mom maybe um, and seeing like that trauma kind of induced. Like I started to feel bad for Mike Myers. I was like, oh wait, he really do got mommy issues. <laughs> then we see like set pieces of the asylum. Like, oh, okay, we've got people like he's trying to work on his issues. And then we bring him into being his full killer. And I think the stair scene got me. I, yeah. That's the scene where I think everyone knows that moment when they think of Mike Myers at the top of the scene, like stairs just standing there menacingly. And then you walk two steps and get scared the other direction. Yeah. To the point where someone in our group got like so lost in the house, it felt like a house. They didn't know which way to go. Oh, man. So we're just standing there and I'm like, can you move? <laughs> move. And Please. She's, she's looking back at me. She's like, I'm sorry. I just, I don't know where to go. I go forward. Just go forward. <laughs> Please forward for the love of God. If you don't move he's gonna come back here <laughs> dead man's pier definitely had the coolest aesthetic and like story in my opinion mm. halloween had the moments where i thought i was literally going to die yes <laughs> <laughs> i was terrified and yeah. then they give you to the big climax at the end where there's like multi mikey myers yeah it's the same thing kind of like the weekend where there's the second time they did it where it was like mirrors but also there were a bunch of like oh. human sized mike myers and uh and michael myers and then like every now and then one would move and it's like what was that i saw that i saw that and mm -mm. yeah very very mike freaky. Myers is not a small dude. So for me, yeah. a small person. Yeah, yeah. Mike Myers is like one of my biggest, big broly dude who never dies. Apparently, I mean, yeah. we've had we're at what Halloween Forever, <laughs> Halloween XX Five, Halloween ends, Halloween, Halloween ends survive. begins and started again. <laughs> uh, so I'm I'm so good, honestly. I'm glad that was the last one because yeah. it was a great finale. Yeah, it yeah, was yeah. cathartic in the worst and best way. <laughs> But, but yeah, like, like you said, that was the final house we did. And my gosh, what a fantastic Halloween Horror Nights. Halloween Horror Nights 31 was spectacular. And I am so excited to see what they're going to do next year yes. for Halloween Horror Nights. And uh, yeah, I, I just I have no idea. It's one of those things. We, we had an opportunity to actually talk with a couple of guys, uh, Matt and Charles, who were two of the guys in charge of the creative of Halloween Horror Nights. And we'll, we'll release that as a separate interview. And uh, it was that was really, really neat to kind of pick their brains and kind of oh, yeah. see how they approach stuff and... And hear the process, yeah, like literally yeah. like just, I'm I'm a big fan of behind the scenes. I know you are too. Oh, yeah. So just like learning the deeds of the creative process, learning how to work with like IPs or build the stories and um, how they like even train the scare actors were some of the stuff that we got to learn through the RAP tour. Like our tour guides were on point. Yeah, like yeah. it was so much fun. Yeah, Paul and Emmanuel, like they were, they were our RAP tour guides. They actually gave us like the, the universal VIP tour the next day yes. as well. And a big shout out to them. So Paul and Emmanuel, you guys are awesome. Hopefully, uh, we'd love to talk to them too sometime. Oh, I would love like, to. Like more than brain. anything, I was talking with Paul uh, after we had lunch uh, on the next day, on the second day. And I was like, how do you get to do this? And he kind of went through the process of like, oh yeah, being hired on as like a tour guide was so cool. He has like a 15 year career doing stuff like this. Yeah. It's wild. <laughs> yeah, it was so cool. And <laughs> I'm like- Where do you go to like tour training? I need to, I need yeah, to be a part of this. He was like an actor. And then like he did like training. He like, he did a lot of Halloween Horror Night stuff before and then ended up getting pulled into VIP stuff. And I'm like, that's- that's sort of my dream job. Like I have a very cool job. I love my job, but if I wasn't going to do this job, that would be a fun job to <laughs> Retirement do. maybe? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe I want to, you know, retire, go become a VIP tour guide. Universal. Would be fun. But, but yeah, Halloween Horror Nights was absolutely spectacular. I mean, like we didn't really get like the food. We had the twisted taters. Yeah, what the heck is that? Explain that to me real so quick because people need to know. Apparently it's iconic. It's it's a So it's a potato. It's a baked potato that they skewer and then they like spiral cut and pull. So it's like, Essentially, like like potato chips on a skewer, and then they cover it with like different kind of stuff. Like yeah, I had but one. It wasn't chippy though. No, like it was soft. It, yeah, it was still like a potato. <laughs> like I had one that had a hot dog in it too. And then yeah, the, that's, the twisted tater's been around for a long time. Uh, God, there's so many other amazing food options and, and like, drinks too. And drink Let's not forget too. the drinks. They did some great little adaptations. We're like, hey, I just want a little something to get me over yeah, yeah. my fears. We'll give me a little me liquid courage. You know, <laughs> they said bugs. I gotta be prepared. Um, I love anything themed. So that was awesome to see that they go in on Halloween from the food to the houses to the scares to, to everything. And before we wrap up, uh, one last thing here. Uh, Tripophobia. Tripophobia. Tripophobia is the holes on the yeah. body fear. Extreme or irrational aversion to or fear of clusters of small holes or bumps. Yeah. yeah you should figure out if you have that phobia very quickly because yeah. uh, apparently it's a new trend to scare the ever-living daylights out of you um, to use this thing. And their makeup 
is just oh, so, so good. Yeah. good. Yeah, everything felt like it was on point this year. Like yeah. there were like last year there were a couple houses like okay, that was all right. And like this year they're like all the houses were pretty dang solid. I don't think there was a bad one. I mean, I, I think Hellblock Horror, if, if I had to pick kind of like the weakest one, Hellblock Horror, but even that one was great. Right. There were some amazing monsters and Exa creatures inside. Exactly. So it was like, but there was really no misses this year. Like they were all really, really cool. So, Ranking on the spot. Nick, go now. Uh, Dead Man's Pier, be number one. I would say probably um, Monsters, Legends Collide, number two. Yeah. And then number three would probably be Weekend for me. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say Dead Man's, Chupacab, and. Uh, oh, so Chupacab is so good. Yeah. Too. And then I like uh, the Monsters one, but I'm a big fan of. I liked Black Phone, even oh, yeah? though it was short. I just loved how great it was to match the movie. Like, it was like a one for one experience. Yeah. So. Wow, you guys are just going to betray Halloween like that, huh? <laughs> Halloween's <laughs> there. Right. No, it's fine. I it's mean, okay. I, I, mean I, think, I think Weekend the Music for me was so cool. Like, okay. That was such a neat experience, you know? Like, I, I dug that. I love music. And so, like, that was a cool house for me. So. I think Halloween transcends, all right? It was the, the cherry on the top, all right? <laughs> I can't put it in my top three because it takes a slot. My top three <laughs> is just the Nightmare Fuel Wildfire Show. All, all three. <laughs> all three. <laughs> <laughs> <Awfully slow times. laughs> well, uh, but that's going to do it for our look at Halloween Horror Nights uh, 31, Halloween Horror Nights yes. 2022. Again, thank you very much, Universal Studios, for bringing us out to Orlando and checking that out. It was an awesome, awesome time. Now, this is the point of the, of the podcast where I ask you a question, and I have one for you today. Ooh. So they have very rarely brought a house back. It's only happened one other time with an American werewolf in London. If you were going to bring a house back from a previous Halloween Horror Nights, which house would you bring back? It could be this year's. It could be a previous one. Whatever you want to do. Me personally, I would love to see Ghostbusters come back because I'm just selfish. And I want to <laughs> yeah. see Ghostbusters. But uh, do you have any houses that you, you remember or would like to see again? Or is there anything that happened this year? Like seeing Dead Man's Pier come back would be really cool. That like, would be awesome. Yeah. Um, I would have to say I enjoyed uh, the IP house for Dead Silence when I went. Okay. Um, I thought it was pretty cool. Dolls freaked me out. Uh, and I felt like I couldn't scream because that's a part of that lore. Um, so having a house where the lore is if you scream, you die is it was a terrifying experience nice. to me. So I'd love for that. I guess it'll never happen, but man, that Marvel house that Mally told us about in the Halloween Horror Nights lore episode oh, forever ago. Yeah. Oh, I would yeah. love to see a Marvel Carnage Halloween Horror Nights house. Or yeah. Saw. I'd love for Saw. Saw would be pretty OG cool. Saw, I would take me in it. Or like maybe the first two movies combined yeah, where like yeah. I'm there. You, trapped. Walk through, you walk through like the thing where yeah. the guys change the wall. Yeah, or, or something. the needle pits or something like that and seeing like the traps or Amanda and the bicycle thing. Like I just, I would love to see all those little like IP like callbacks. That'd so. be very, very cool. So let us know in the comments over roosterteeth.com what house would you like to see return? For a future Halloween Horror Nights, that'd be very. There's a whole lot out there. They're <laughs> for 31 years now. Yeah. Plenty of houses to choose from. So let us know what would be your house and why. And then during our live stream, which I think our next our next live stream is November 12th. No, 9th. Nope. 9th. No, no, yep. no November 12th is Extra Life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> November 9th. Uh, the week of Extra Life. Uh, we're going to be doing a live stream, so uh, you can come and watch us. We're going to be hanging out, uh, going through all of your your answers from previous episodes. Yeah. Also, we are working on a mascot for annual pass that uh, Ben and Gail Fox have been up to. So we're going to try to make that happen. So check that out on November 9th at 2 p.m. Central, I probably believe. Well, I'm sure we'll tweet about it. And uh, yeah, check that out and, uh, and, and join <laughs> along and say hi to us. And we're going to be hanging out and chatting and saying hello to everyone. So that's going to do it for us today. Beeks, do you feel like you learned anything today? Uh, yeah, I learned that I don't like bugs. <laughs> I remembered you that. You just figured that out? Yeah, I, I etched it out of my mind, Jack. Like, I honestly nice. tried to forget. Like, if when y'all see this vlog and I'm running out being like, it's still on me, it's all over me, you'll understand. There's a lot of times you hit the deck. Like, we, we actually got to meet Blue at one point, the Velociraptor, and you hit the deck on that one, too. It was a lot, a lot of fun time. A, a lot, lot of, of fight or flight, and I choose flight. Yeah, you, you go fetal. It's like fetal. Fight, fight, flight, or fetal, and you just go fetal for that one, but... Uh, don't forget, we have some annual, annual pass merchandise at store.roosteeth.com. We have our new, our uh, our this is my theme park t-shirt yes. hitting. And the uh, also our new holiday hat is coming out on uh, November 21st. And the Rope Drop Running Club t-shirt and our annual pass postcard set, which we've been asking for for a long time, is coming on Cyber Monday, November 28th. Woo. So grab those when those hit the store. Goodies. Uh, yeah, and also make sure to grab a fanny pack as well. Those things are super great. And send us a postcard if you want to. That's one last thing I have. Okay, so we actually have some mail here. Uh, a couple things I want to get to. First of all, 
So uh, to, to taunt you, if you're watching YouTube.com slash annual pass right now, uh, we got a really, really cool package, BK, Ooh. that I'm excited to show you. But we're going to save it for our live stream. So tune into our live stream on November 9th, which is like next week, I believe, if you're, wa if you're listening to this live right now. And I have this, which is a box, and it says to BK on it. And I'm not gonna to let BK. I'm not gonna let her look at it yet. So uh, anyway, Wait, what? Yeah. So you can check that out when we live stream on November 9th. It's uh, it's pretty cool. No. So I looked at it. I looked at it and I was like, oh my gosh, that's incredible. <gasps> and so anyway, you'll get to see her reaction when we open that thing on November 9th. So there you go. That's a tease for you. But that's gonna do it for us today here at Annual Pass. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening and watching. It really does mean the world to us. Thank you again, Universal, for bringing us out for Halloween Horror Nights. We love our friends over there, and we've gotten to do some very, very, very cool, unique stuff that I never thought I'd get to do. So thank you very much. BK, thank you for being here. Huh, thanks for having me, Jeff. Awesome. Love you guys. <laughs> Take care of yourselves, and we'll see you next time. See ya. Bye.